Hi, this is Jim from Trek World, and today we're going to take a look at something every Star Trek collector should have, but many don't know exists. In this case, the Bandai Toy Catalog from 1995. Now, this particular catalog that we're going to take a look at is actually a catalog that was produced in the UK. So as a result, as you can see here, it lists specific UK locations in which you could actually find these toys located at. Here in the United States, of course, they were in different locations, but could be found in places, you know, obviously such as Walmart, occasionally Sears, Sam Goody, Spencer's Gifts. They had quite a bit of a distribution point back in the 1990s. Now, what makes this interesting is that if you are a toy collector and you want to know what things were actually available in 1995 from Bandai, this is pretty much the only tool you have. Now, from the first two pages alone, you can see that obviously they made action figures, and we have a USS Enterprise desk piece as well. And of course, there would be no Star Trek toys without the typical phaser communicator and tricorder. Now, I don't think I've ever actually seen firsthand what the Bandai phasers, tricorders, and communicators look like. It would be interesting if some of you could leave comments as to how well you thought they matched against the Art Asylum Diamond Select toys that were made later. Now, in addition to classic TOS things, Bandai produced next generation items as well. Phasers, tricorder, bridge set. I like the transporter. 20 years after our friends at Mego did one, Bandai decided to do one as well. Although this one is much more electronic, obviously, and comes with batteries. Now, Bandai was also the first company that I'm aware of that did this sort of thing. And that was they actually made ships that opened up, and inside, you could use Star Trek action figures. They called this their inner space line, which I thought was actually pretty slick. Not stopping with ships, but they also took other familiar iconic images from Star Trek and actually bundled them together as miniature playsets as well. Take a look here at the phaser, the tricorder. Yeah, some, there's some pretty neat stuff here. I like what Bandai did with this. And just like they produced the original Star Trek Enterprise that we saw in the first set, they also produced other ships as time went on as well. And finally, a Klingon bird of prey. And also a little note there that the following year in 1996, Star Trek's 30th anniversary, they would be launching more additional original series toys and toys from Voyager. One of the hardest things for Star Trek collectors to track down are toys. Now, I know that that might seem oxymoronic because we have a lot of toys from Star Trek over the past 50 years. But think how difficult it is to determine exactly who made what. Who made phasers, communicators, and tricorders from the original series? You know, more importantly, what if somebody made an unusual ship like the shuttlecraft Goddard? How would you find that? If you hadn't seen it with your own eyes or stumbled over it, how would you find that? Well, the price guide that we talked about would give you some things. But the catalog from toy manufacturers are the best thing to slice bread for this stuff. 